There's a whole science behind how color works. And so color can actually do and mean a lot of things. We see it every day. Would you take off at a red light at an intersection? Probably not, because we know red means stop. So today I wanna to walk through the science behind color, what it means, how it works, and then ultimately how it pertains to hair. Let's start off with primary colors. There are three, red, yellow, and blue. These are like the OG primary colors. You cannot make them, but they are what help make up all the other colors. Now in terms of lightness and darkness, out of the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, yellow would be technically the lightest of the three, reflecting the most light. Red would be the richest, and blue would be the deepest and coolest. When you combine these three equally, you would get more of a gray, um, neutralized end result. Don't forget, blue will always, any cool color, but blue especially in this trio of primary colors will always overpower and overtake your formula. You've got primary, but now let's talk about secondary colors. How do I get a secondary color? If I take equal parts of, let's say for example, red and yellow, has to be equal parts, you will get orange, a secondary color. Or let's say, what happens if I mix red and blue? Mm, equal parts, you'll end up with purple. And last up, if you mix equal parts of yellow and blue, you would get green. Wait, did I already say green? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> so all together right now, we've got primary and secondary colors, red, yellow, blue, green, orange, and purple. Now we have a third layer of color called tertiary colors. How do I get one of those? Take one of your secondary colors. Purple, for example, which is red and blue. But if I add one part of my OG primary blue to one part of my secondary color purple, I would then get a tertiary color called blue-violet. And the same is true for all around the wheel. Let's talk about how color interacts with each other. For example, there's a concept of complementary colors. These are colors that oppose each other on the color wheel blue and orange. When you mix them equal parts, they kind of cancel each other out. You get this like kind of gray-brown color. But the really cool thing is, when you put them next to each other and you don't mix them together, they really complement each other. So we're starting to get into how colors react within each other, not just how to make them. So it's like there's two different worlds of color. There's the chromatic colors, red, yellow, and blue, and you make all the colors with those, secondary, tertiary. But now we've got this other world of color that's black and white. And the secondary colors in the achromatic world are all the shades of gray in between. The achromatic colors, black and white, when you add those to purple, are what create depth or lightness. Let's talk about color as it pertains to inside the hair. This is called melanin, or natural pigment. The two types of melanin are eumelanin and pheomelanin. Now think about this. Eumelanins are the blacks, browns, and grays, and pheomelanins are the reds, golds, and yellows. Does this sound familiar? Chromatic and achromatic? I don't know. Uh, but the darker somebody's natural hair is, the more eumelanins you have and the more pheomelanins you have. The lighter somebody's hair, maybe a less eumelanins that create depth and more pheomelanins. Now a redhead has tons of pheomelanins, but that doesn't mean they don't have any eumelanins. Think about a seven-year-old natural redhead child and a 40-year-old natural redhead adult. As we age, we develop more eumelanins, and that's where we get the term mousy. Everybody's hair becomes more mousy as we get older. You can see it mostly in redheads and blondes. Now, when you start to lighten hair, especially dark hair, I think we could all agree the first mm, 30 seconds to about a minute, minute and a half, you don't just immediately see red. You go for like this dark brown to brown to then, oh, there's the pheomelanins, there's the orange, there's the gold. It's because eumelanins, when you're talking about the inside of the strand of hair, eumelanins live more on the outside and pheomelanins live deeper into the cortex. This is why it's so easy to go from level 
four to five in a matter of about a minute and a half. It's that five to six to seven to eight, where you're really, those fail melanins are deep inside the cortex. And for that lightener or that high lift or that color to really get in there and break those down so that we can see lightness, that's what takes, uh, that's what, that's why it's taking a while because the fail melanins are smaller and harder to break down. Eumelanins are bigger and live more on the surface. Once you break down that eumelanin and you see a deep orange, that's the underlying pigment of about a level five, six, like a red orange. As we go lighter in level, you start to get rid of or break down the reds and then you're left with oranges. Once we start breaking down the oranges, you're left with golds. Once we start breaking down the golds, you're left with yellow. And once we start breaking down the yellows, we end up at pale yellow. This is what the underlying pigment means when you're lifting. And the reason it's so important is let's take a step back to the very beginning of this video. If I have lifted my client to a level eight and I take that lightener off and I'm looking at yellow gold, all of this comes right back to the color circle. If I'm seeing yellow gold, what do I need to cancel that out on the color wheel? You simply uh, pick the complementary color that would oppose it. So if I'm seeing yellow gold, I'm probably gonna want some sort of blue violet. And that's how we start to formulate for hair color using color theory and underlying pigment. For more of this juicy color theory information, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.